Join us on a journey through a beloved TV series from 1965 that left a lasting impression on the industry. The show is set in a German prisoner of war camp during World War II and blends humor with the realities of war. In this video, we'll uncover interesting facts about the show that kept audiences engaged. Before we begin, have you ever had a laugh or a moment of reflection while watching it? It's a show that many people have fond memories of. What qualities do you think make it stand the test of time? As we explore its unique blend of humor and history, you might rediscover why it's still loved today. Stay tuned for an exploration of its unexpected charm and significance. And don't forget to share your favorite memory or personal experience related to it in the comments below. We'd love to hear your stories. Get ready for a trip down memory lane funny, surprising, and maybe a bit nostalgic. Keep watching and let's celebrate together. Your stories are welcome. Share them in the comments below. A classic sitcom from 1965, Hogan's Heroes, is set during World War II in a German prisoner of war camp called Stalag 13. The show follows a group of Allied prisoners led by Colonel Robert Hogan. They come up with clever plans to outsmart their German captors, Colonel Wilhelm Klink and Sergeant Hans Schultz. The story revolves around Hogan and his team using the camp's resources for their secret operations, sabotaging enemy plans, and gathering intelligence right under the Germans' noses. The main characters, including Hogan, Klink, and Schultz, create an entertaining dynamic that mixes humor with the seriousness of war. The camaraderie among the Allied prisoners adds depth to the show, with each character bringing their own personality and skills to the table. Despite the wartime setting, Hogan's Heroes presents the realities of war in a light-hearted way. The show received acclaim for its innovative blend of comedy and wartime drama with clever writing and strong performances from the cast. It became a cultural phenomenon during its run, demonstrating that humor could be found even in difficult times. In summary, Hogan's Heroes is a timeless sitcom set in a German POW camp, known for its memorable characters and innovative storytelling. In 2001, Robert Clary, a cast member of the TV series, penned a memoir titled From the Holocaust to Hogan's Heroes, the autobiography of Robert Clary. The memoir delves into his life journey, encompassing his experiences during the Holocaust and his later role in the show. The character Corporal Langenscheid in Hogan's Heroes drew his name from Langenscheid Verlag, a German company known for publishing dictionaries and language education materials. The choice reflects the show's attention to detail in creating character names with subtle connections to the German language. Bob Crane, another pivotal figure in the series, faced financial struggles in the mid to late 1970s. However, post his tragic murder, Crane's estate saw a significant upturn. This transformation resulted from a lucrative syndication deal for Hogan's Heroes, in which Crane held a small ownership stake. The newfound success brought millions of dollars to his estate. In the series, Colonel Hogan and Sergeant Carter are often referred to as being from the U.S. Air Force, which is historically inaccurate. The U.S. Air Force was established in 1947, but during the time depicted in the show, they would have been part of either the U.S. Army Air Corps or the U.S. Army Air Forces. The confusion likely arises because the Army Air Corps transitioned into the Army Air Forces before the creation of the U.S. Air Force in 1947. In the episode titled The Collector General, viewers get a rare glimpse of Klink's office, Helga's office, the front door of Klink's building, and a corner of Hogan's barracks. Oddly, half of Klink's office building is never used throughout the series. Helga's desk sits between Klink's office door and a door to the unutilized portion of the building. Despite having a window overlooking this area, it remains unoccupied and untouched throughout the show. Actor Ivan Dixon, who portrayed Sergeant Kinchlow, left the series after the fifth season. He departed because he wanted to pursue more serious acting and directing opportunities, feeling that Hogan's Heroes was limiting his growth. When the show was renewed for two more seasons after its initial five-year contract, Dixon opted not to renew his contract. He later expressed regret over this decision when the series was abruptly canceled after the sixth season during the Rural Purge. Kenneth Washington replaced Dixon in the sixth season as Sergeant Baker. Dixon's departure from the show did not involve any ill feelings, as he had a good relationship with the cast and crew, including occasional visits with the Cranes, who played a married couple on the show. Cynthia Lynn, who left after the first season, also departed due to contractual reasons, being replaced by Sigurd Valdes for subsequent seasons. Colonel Klink and Sergeant Schultz affectionately called Corporal Libo Cockroach because he was small but tough in the prison. Despite being short, Libo had a big personality that made everyone like him. 
Meanwhile, Hogan and his secret team planned clever schemes right under the noses of the German guards. Hogan was really smart and not only talked with London, but also secretly talked to a submarine, helping other prisoners escape. Bob Crane's acting as Colonel Robert Hogan is remembered by many people as really good, showing how talented he was and how much people liked the show. His acting made the character seem real and kept people interested in the show for a long time. Hogan's Heroes is a classic TV show that many people still enjoy today. Its characters and stories are a big part of pop culture. This shows how creative and talented the people who made it were. In the production of the series, Robert Clary and Larry Havis would often pass the time between shots by singing together. Interestingly, in the German version of the show, certain phrases and references were altered. For instance, the salute Heil Hitler was replaced with Heil Creator. Additionally, references to bombings and killings were modified. For example, when the Allies destroyed a munitions factory, it was changed to a toilet paper factory in the German version. Similarly, when Sergeant Schultz reported bombings in Hamburg, it was portrayed as the Royal Air Force dropping candy for propaganda purposes. Before Bob Crane was cast, Richard Dawson was considered for the role of Colonel Hogan. However, Dawson felt unsure about his ability to mimic an American accent. Throughout its six-season span, the TV series featured interesting connections and details. Robert Clary, known for his role in the show, appeared in the 1975 movie The Hindenburg, where he took part in an anti-Nazi song and dance on the doomed airship. Notably, the show had different time slots in its seasons. Seasons 1, 2, and 5 aired on Fridays, while seasons 3 and 4 were on Saturdays. Season 6's episodes were broadcast on Sundays. Another interesting fact is the leather jacket worn by Bob Crane in the series. Originally worn by Frank Sinatra in Von Ryan's Express, it found its way to Hogan's Heroes. Additionally, Vito Scotti, who played Major Bonacelli in an episode, also appeared as the train engineer in Von Ryan's Express. This jacket later appeared on Greg Kinnear in the Bob Crane film biography Autofocus and is now housed at the Liberty Aviation Museum in Port Clinton, Ohio. Many fascinating connections exist in the world of Hogan's Heroes, linking it to other pieces of cinematic history. In the series, viewers might notice a peculiar detail regarding the vehicles some have their steering wheels on the left while others have them on the right. This discrepancy contradicts the standard, as in Germany, where the show is set, vehicles should universally have left side steering wheels due to driving on the right hand side of the road. Despite Klink's portrayal as a coward, his military accolades tell a different story. Decorated for valor in both World War I and World War II, Klink is paradoxically presented as a military hero despite his comedic demeanor. Actor Noam Pitlick made recurring appearances in the series, albeit in different roles. Across seven episodes, Pitlick portrayed a variety of characters, showcasing his versatility as an actor. In the movie Judgment at Nuremberg, Howard Kane and Werner Klemperer showed their talents before they joined the TV series. In Australia, it was the only show in the top 30, showing how much people liked it. Bob Crane and Werner Klemperer were in all 168 episodes, which helped make the show really popular. People liked Hogan's Heroes because of the great acting by the whole cast, and because the story was interesting and funny. It was a hit all around the world, and is remembered as an important part of TV history. In the first season, CPL, Langenshade, a short and thin character, showed up a lot, suggesting a possible Laurel and Hardy partnership with Sergeant Schultz. But this collaboration didn't really happen, and Langenshade slowly disappeared from the show, popping up now and then with different names in later seasons. John Banner, famous for playing Sergeant Schultz, played a similar role in the movie 36 Hours. Legal issues came up when Donald Bevan and Edmund T. R. Zisinski, the writers of the play Stalag 17, sued Bing Crosby Productions, claiming that Hogan's heroes had similarities to their play. Despite these legal problems, the show continued, moving its filming location to Paramount Studios after Paramount took over DeZillu Productions in 1967. Eventually, Risher Entertainment got the rights to the series, and Paramount took over distribution in 1999. The show's legal history didn't stop it from staying popular over time. In an episode of The Untouchables, Banner famously said, I know nothing. Six years later, he said the same line as Sergeant Schultz. He held the rank of Oberfeld level, which is like a master sergeant. Newkirk, a character who often smoked, did so because the actor Dawson smoked a lot in real life. This portrayal made the character more real and interesting. Hogan's Heroes, the show where Schultz's character became famous, became a classic in TV history because of the great acting. The way the characters interacted, each with their own unique traits, made the show very popular. 
Hogan's Heroes influenced many other shows because of its great characters and stories. Schultz, with his famous line, is still loved by TV fans. The series endured for six years, surpassing the duration of American involvement in World War II by over two years. A real-life POW camp, Stahl Ag 13C, stood near Hamelburg, Germany, repurposed from a former training facility. Throughout the first five seasons, Sergeant Carter sported a distinct leather flight jacket, featuring a white right sleeve and portion of the front. However, in the sixth season, this iconic jacket was replaced with an all-brown version. These subtle changes in attire mirrored the evolution of the show across its seasons. The character of Sergeant Schultz, prior to the war, had been the president of a successful toy manufacturing company. Colonel Clint tried to become a bookkeeper at the toy company after the war. The black and white pilot episode originally included a Russian character, who was played by Leonid Kinsky. Kinksey refused to continue with the series because he became uncomfortable with having Nazi characters starring in a comedy. The series was originally supposed to take place in a regular American prison, but creators Bernard Fang and Albertus Rudy rewrote the teleplay when they heard that NBC was developing the pilot Campo 44, which took place in an Italian POW camp, spoofed in Mad Magazine as Hokum's Heroes. General Burkhalter's staff car was an American hybrid with a Mercedes-Benz logo on it. Colonel Klink's staff car was a 1936 Mercedes 260D, although in some episodes it was the Pullman limousine model, while in others it was the standard model. Colonel Hogan's fake name to test new POWs that may be possible double agents for Nazis and report his secret group of heroes was Major Campbell. The name was mentioned twice in the series' debut on Friday, September 17. In the opening credits of the series, a distinctive Mercedes Model G4 parade car is featured making occasional appearances throughout the show. This six-wheeled vehicle, equipped with four-wheel drive on the rear wheels, was favored by the German military elite during its time. Originally pitched to NBC by Bing Crosby Productions, the pilot episode's comedic success led NBC executives to pass on the series, believing subsequent episodes couldn't surpass the humor. CBS stepped in and picked up the show, setting the stage for its eventual success. Werner Klemperer, who portrayed Colonel Klink, agreed to the role only after receiving assurance that Klink would consistently fail in his schemes. This decision added a layer of humor to the character's portrayal throughout the series. These behind-the-scenes elements contributed to the unique appeal of the show, showcasing the unconventional circumstances that led to its creation and success. In real life, many of the actors were very skilled. For example, Werner Klemperer played the violin, did a bit of conducting at times, and also narrated pretty much every major opera from 1973 to 1995. Bob Crane played the drums. Howard Kane played the banjo and won many awards. Robert Clary, Larry Havis, and Ivan Dixon could sing. Richard Dawson was a talented magician. Werner Klemperer and John Banner both appeared in Operation Eichmann. The various secret code names that Colonel Hogan and his outfit used were fairy tale names of Papa Bear, Goldilocks, and Little Red Riding Hood. Colonel Hogan's code name was Goldilocks in the series' debut, contacting an underwater submarine in the Informer. This series stands as the lengthiest American TV portrayal of World War II, spanning six seasons and 168 episodes. Larry Havis, one of the cast, remained steadfast in keeping his wedding ring on during filming. To accommodate this, he consistently wore gloves throughout most of his performance. John Banner, another member of the cast, fled Austria following its union with Germany in 1938. Arriving in the United States as a political refugee, he faced the challenge of learning English from scratch. His determination led him to phonetically sound out his lines until he gained proficiency in the language, a skill that proved vital to his role in the series. Bob Crane, who played Colonel Hogan, married his co-star Sigrid Valdes, who portrayed Hilda. Werner Klemperer, known as Colonel Klink, fell in love with Louise Troy, an actress who appeared on the show in different roles. Robert Clary, who played Corporal Lebo, survived the Holocaust, which added depth to his character's portrayal. The actors on Hogan's Heroes had interesting personal lives beyond the show. This shows that they had diverse backgrounds and experiences, 